Welcome to the Hands-On Business Podcast, where else are you going to come to get tips, tricks, and advice on growing your business? As you know, what people tend to love about this podcast is that it is a place where you can hear real business leaders discussing systems, methodologies, and strategies that they have used to help them catapult growth in their business. So I'm your podcast host, Hakeem Adebiyi, and I've grown several small businesses to multi-million pound enterprises and noticed that there wasn't really a place to focus on where I was, i.e. growing a small business. All of the content that seemed to be out there was about big business and often just a lot of theory and no practical implementable advice, which is exactly why I set up this podcast. Today, we talk to Kevin Brent, who is an award-winning business strategist, and we're going to be talking about the five key reasons businesses fail to scale beyond seven figures. The episode is going to be talking, obviously, about scaling your business, and in it, Kevin will discuss the major challenges of scaling a business. Uh, He'll also talk about where you need to start if you want to be successful, and what are the things you really need to be thinking about to get to where you want to be. As always, there'll be a lot more besides. Happy listening. Delighted to have Kevin Brent on the show today. Kevin is an award-winning entrepreneurial business practitioner focused on strategy and business development and has a passion for building value for business owners. So he's come to the right place. Uh, Kevin, like me, actually has a senior level of pharmaceutical experience and he's combined that with strategic consulting, value-based management, medical communications, and e-business. So very much an entrepreneurial self-starter. He has an MBA as well from INSEAD and has built and led four businesses. So we'll be getting into all of that. His key areas of expertise that I'll be tapping into today are around scaling businesses and building value. So today, on today's episode, we're going to be picking Kevin's brains on five reasons businesses fail to scale beyond seven figures. So welcome to the show, Kevin. Fantastic. Thank you, Hakeem. Delighted to be on. And what a yeah, what a great introduction. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm only telling you the truth and what you already know. <laughs> so t- t- tell me a bit more about your journey, because I'm, I'm really interested in this, because I've, I come from a, I've got a pharmaceutical background. Right. So how have you gone from being a, in the pharmaceutical business unit type area to now focusing on helping to scale businesses? Yeah, great. And, and in fact, um, if we go back further than that, then I was in the Air Force a little bit as well before I even went into the pharmaceutical industry. So, um, you know, loads of loads of different loads of different things. But I guess with the with the pharmaceutical industry, then um, went up to a to, to a reasonable level where I was reporting to the general manager of the UK of the UK business, and it became a bit of a point of okay, well, if I want to get any further, um, then I'm going to have to go off and do an MBA or go and you know, go and go and do something because up until that point. You'd just been promoted on the benefits of, of your merits of what you'd done, what you knew, but wasn't really learning outside of that functional area that I was that I was in, if you like. So went off and did an MBA. I guess that opened my eyes to uh, to a load lots of lots of other things, and, uh, and then took me out of the pharmaceutical industry from there, really. Oh, excellent. And then, so what what led you into scaling up the business development, all the stuff that you're now doing, and, and then yeah. launching for individual businesses? Yeah, so I think that probably started when I when I finished my MBA, I went to work for a consulting company called Maricon, and their area is they, they compete with companies like BCG and McKinsey, but their area of expertise is in value based management, in maximizing the value of businesses. And of course, they're working with big corporates. That's what it's all about. So they're talking about shareholder value. But um, you know, I gradually became, and I'd always been interested in the small, in small and medium-sized businesses. And as I started to think more and more about working in the in, in the field, then the idea was to bring some of those concepts from the big corporates and building value. But how does that relate to us as a as a small and medium-sized business owner? What principles can we can we apply? And, and when you were doing that, what, what was the main difference that you saw between? The corporate world and business and building value compared to the the smaller, uh, you know, small medium sized businesses. Well, language is language is one. Corporates and consultants love love um, a load of acronyms, don't they? And, uh, <laughs> and all of, and all of, and all of that. But no, it, it's 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 ve- it's some of the principles, some of the overarching things are obviously the, the same. But if we're talking about a small small and medium sized business owner. 
you know, we're, we're not really talking about maximizing shareholder value and looking at P multiples and all of those, all of those good things, but, it, but we, what we're much more focused on and we have the day-to-day issues and challenges that maybe you don't get as a, as a big corporate, you know, we've got to, as a small business owner, we've got to really struggle to manage the time that we've got, got in the day. We've been pulled in all sorts of different, different directions. We're getting sucked back into the day-to-day operations of the, of, of the business. So we've got to find ways to, to get ourselves out of that, but we're not going to do it in a, in a big corporate way and get the consultants in and start you know, do, doing a big analysis and telling us what equations we need to think about to maximize the value. Okay, that, that's that's clear. So, so you've you, you've left obviously farm fuel. You've gone into um, a consultancy business, and then you've then started uh, selling your own business. So, t- tell me a bit more about Bizmart, Biz Smart, sorry, yep. <laughs> and the Flight Academy system because I think that's my audience would be really interested to know more about that. Yeah, so so I set up Biz Smart. One of the one of the things that really struck me was the was how few businesses actually scale. And by scaling, I don't necessarily mean become multinational um, uh, and household names and, and millions of pounds of turnover necessarily. I'm just simply talking about scaling beyond the point of, of really where one person is leading, leading, the, leading the business with a, with a small team. And in, in this country, and it, the figures are similar worldwide, less than 4% of businesses scale beyond nine employees. And less than one percent beyond fifty. So, you know that that means that ninety six percent of all businesses in this country have nine or fewer employees. And so, when we're talking about scaling, we're talking about understanding some of the reasons why that is. You know, what stops uh, what stops somebody with perhaps a good business idea um, and a you know a very very clever and dedicated person. What what stops them from being able to grow that business to maybe you know, 20, 25 people, you know, as I say, we're not talking about growing to growing to necessarily hundreds and thousands of employees and millions of turnover, but but getting to a point where actually they've created a business which is sustainable, it sustains them, it's at the level that they want it to be at, and it's operating in a way that that isn't causing them a headache every day, but they're getting a decent return uh, for the time they're spending spending in it. And that for us as as small and medium sized business owners is 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 a is a real challenge. You know, we started our business for all sorts of reasons. Some of us may have started the business thinking we're, we're going to go for global domination. Um, <laughs> others may have just thought, you know, what well, I just need to just need to earn a decent a decent living from it. Um, we decide that running our own business is the is the way to do that, and then we get into it and find that actually, it's not it's not as easy as maybe we thought it might have been. Yeah, and and, and I've, I've been this only the other day, and I've I've thought about this scaling up, and she was saying to me that she wants to scale up, but she wants to do it through outsourcing. Yep. So is that is that taken into consideration here? Is that when you talk about employees, are you talking about specifically employed and uh, you know national insurance, et cetera, or are you just talking about people working for you? Yeah, I, I'm uh, talk about people working for it because yes, if we decide to employ using um, using outsourced people, then it, we've still got to get the right model that works, and we've still got to manage those people, and that's where a lot of the complexities come from. It, it's the increasing number of people involved in and around the in and around the business, and outsourcing is a is a perfectly good way. In fact, it's a great way of being able to take on some resource in a flexible way in the early stages of a, of a business without getting yourself in the position where you may struggle to pay pay full time full time salaries on a, 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 a and, and you know business goes up and down a little bit but actually you if you think about the long term value of your business then there's less value in having a network of outsourced people than there is in having the expertise in house so how do we balance that over time? And um, and a way that quite a lot of people will use is they'll maybe use outsource people to a certain point. They'll decide at what point now do we now take somebody in house. So we still use the outsource resource, but now we backfill essentially with with somebody in internally. And and if you can find that right nice way of scaling up, there you you've got the flexibility. You've got the best of both worlds. Then you've got the flexibility of of uh, using an outsourced people and you go up and down if you need to with the, with the amount of work you've got, but you've got, you're building that base internally, uh, which keeps the value inside, allows you to get, you're much more likely to get, because again, you know, people talk about the power of 
your teams and the people within the business is what really can drive a business forward. Well, you're not going to get that in the same way from a group of outsourced consultants than you will do by having people internally. If you really want to switch the people on, get them working together as a real cohesive team, you're much more likely to have to be able to do that with an internal team. So yes, it's, you know, it's not, not easy, but it's about thinking and balancing those, those two things. Okay, thanks. And, and then in terms of the Flight Academy, Bismarck, and obviously you've got the little, uh, the entrepreneurial scale-up system. How do they all fit together? Yeah, so I mean, we, we, we put this together specifically to address the challenges of, of business owners scaling up. And um, the, the, the book, The Entrepreneurial Scale-Up System, is, is our, overall, our overall system, if you like, for, 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 for scaling up, as it says on the, it says on the tin. Um, the, the, the Flight Academy is how we, how we use, it's kind of the umbrella that we use for our services that we will deliver beneath that. But, but we will deliver the entrepreneurial scale-up system through our Flight Academy services. Okay. And then and Biz, Biz Smart, is that the, what's, what, just how does that fit in? So Biz, Biz Smart is the company. That's the okay. that's the company. Yep. So we trade ah, okay. we, trade, we gotcha. trade under the name BizSmart. Uh, yeah. Flight Flight Academy is kind of like the branding that we use for the uh, for the and the umbrella for for the different products and services that we have underneath it. But but the system that we've developed and the the kind of the underlying structure for everything in the model is the entrepreneurial scale up system. Okay. Brilliant. So and and if someone went through either read. Uh, scale up, uh, or they uh, they um, they went through the flight academy. What would you yeah. say would be the, the key things that they'd get out of that? Most coaches will talk about is, is they'll and the, and and they'll always talk about this this time, money, and time time, money, and um, and people challenges that, that that we all have, and and we all have them as business. As I mentioned earlier on, they're symptoms essentially. Okay, and if we don't manage those symptoms properly by addressing the underlying causes then all that we're going to do as we scale is we're going to increase the size of those symptoms you think about them as headaches right so if you've got a headache um you know you you might well be all right to take an anodine every now and then or a paracetamol or an ibuprofen or something and that may well may well you know <laughs> come up with the pharmaceutical industry if we can talk about some <laughs> some products but that may well that that may well sort your symptoms out for a short period of time but if you've got something underlying that's causing that problem and you don't address that all that's going to happen is they're going to come back uh, and they'll probably come back worse as you as you you know if, you, if it's stress related or whatever else you increase the stress so without getting too too down the medical route it's the same with the same with the business their their symptoms so the idea of the uh, of, of, of this entrepreneurial scale-up system is to help us to think about addressing some of those underlying causes and putting in place a system that means we can have the confidence in scaling our business without increasing those those headaches and a big part a core part of um of the of, of the system is the idea of the of thinking about scaling up as a series of stepping stones and what we then need to do to get from one stepping stone to the next and if we we've already mentioned a couple of them, but if we, if we think about when we start a business, we're on our own. Typically, we might start maybe with with some other people, but typically, we'll start start on our own, and that may be all we ever want to do. We may just want to build the kind of business that's fine as a solo solopreneur, and that's that's great. But that is our first stepping stone, and we can build a nicely profitable business. Hopefully, if if we if we if we've got the right ideas about it, that might deliver what we need. But if we've got an ambition to maybe have three to five people working with us, which is the next, the next one, we've got a, a small team uh, starting to work hopefully really nicely together. Well, that's a different kind of business from the one on our own. And we need to think about a few different things. And it, and it similarly goes up from three to five people. The next one is typically around about 10 people. So eight to 12, eight to 12 people. And then, as I mentioned before, the next, biggest one is going to 20 25 people when we've got a team a senior leadership team working with us then at that point and each one of these and it, and it goes on from there but it's typically around units of team sizes um of typically around three to five eight to twelve those are the sort of key, key units because they're the they're the sizes at which we work great together as as people and we can get some real efficiencies out of it so what 
is a fundamental part of the scale up system is that scale up journey and thinking, okay, first of all, where are we? Secondly, where are we trying to get to? What's the next stepping stone that we want to want, want to get to? Um, and then what do we need to think about in terms of four key areas to get us from where we are now to, to that next stepping stone? So what do we need to think about in terms of um, strategically, you know, maybe in terms of the business model, what, 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 what do we need to think about, about there? You know, have we got uh, a business model that will, that will scale or are we simply just going to add cost to the business by trying, trying, to, trying to get there? Um, have we, what, what does it mean in terms of the people side of things? Do we need to um, develop our own people? Do we need to hire some new people to get it, get in there? What, what, what do we need to think about from the people side? But then also I've now got more people probably coming in. It's going to get a challenge to manage these people. So from an operational side or an executional side, and you know, how do I make sure that we keep on top of what needs to be done to, to get there and I don't lose control? And then of course the, the, the last one then is cash, you know, what, how, not just how do I manage the cash, um, but actually do I need some extra cash? You know, am I going to, and a typical one where this comes into play is going from that around about the 10 people to the 20, 25 people. Am I going to do that from organic growth and the cash flow? Or do I need to take some investment in so that I can maybe recruit ahead or, or do something else, maybe acquire somebody, to an, another company that's going to help me to get there quickly? Because what you don't want to do is get stuck in between one of these pillars because you, that's when we get those real headaches. If we just drift into it, we suddenly find that actually, you know what, um, I'm working hard. I've got more clients. Um, there seems to be more money coming in at the top, but there's certainly not more money coming out at the bottom and, and I'm losing control and all of these, all of these good things and we get stuck in what we call a valley of death. Um, so, so what we need to do is try and make sure we've thought about it beforehand and we avoid, avoid that. Excellent. And then what, what I like about these business models is that they gem they're generally born out of obviously experience and practice. Uh, which I, I always find fascinating because then you get you, you get different things from different people. And, and yes. this one, yeah. So so it is because obviously I've read I've read Gino Whitman's book on yep. attraction and scaling up by Vern Harnish. Harnish. I'm, yep. I'm assuming there's some uh, bits that that, I, that from yours I'd recognise in there as well. That, that what your your own unique brand and spin on it. Yeah, exactly that. You know, we're not, we're not, I'm not trying to say that we've suddenly invented something nobody else has, has thought of, you know, and if you go back, whether it's with Vern Harnish or with Gino Whitman, they're great, they're, you know, they're, they're great books, there's great concepts in there. Some of the concepts that they've used are drawn from uh, existing sources, you know, you can trace a lot of things back. I, I can trace a lot of those things back through to, for example, Stephen Covey and the yeah. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, but you've also got Jim Collins' work in there. There's there's really good, really good, really good stuff, and they they they're great. And as you say, the thing is, as businesses evolve, as we all evolve, we want to use those things. We don't want to don't want to forget some great stuff that's there, but we might need a slightly different way of thinking about things. And I started, I read Vern Harnish, um, and there's some excellent things in there. I felt that that was aimed at a slightly larger group of businesses from the ones. Yeah. I was thinking of which is which is where where um the idea of putting the entrepreneurial scale up system together came from and, and really looking at looking at the specific size of business and we typically work with businesses with between three and 30 employees that's that's where most of it is is, is aimed at and then finding some really practical things that people can do so not just talking about the business school strategy stuff and, and whatever else but actually you know what 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 can we do here so one of the things, for example, that's at the, the, the heart of what we talk about here is a 90-day is a 90 day, 90 day planning cycle, 90-day rhythm, right? Um, backing that up then with, a, with whatever you need, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly to back it up. But just simply, and this is something that anybody can do if they're not doing it now, if you just simply make time every 90 days to sit down, ideally with your team if you've got a team but if you haven't got a team then sit down with one or two other people that you trust and and, and rate their opinions of um and simply have a look back at your last 90 days and go how did that go compared to what we what we wanted to want to achieve and let's have a look forward at the next 90 days what does good look like in 90 days time if we're sat here in 90 days time hakim what has to have happened that that you'd say you know that 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 was a good successful 90 days 
and if we talk that through, we bounce ideas off each other, and we we also ask ourselves questions like what's going on around us that we need to think about. You know, what have we learned? In the last night of days that we didn't know beforehand that we might need to think about and you know what's so what's going well what's not going so well all of those good things and of course you know it won't surprise you to know that we've got a structured approach to that but even if you just sit down make the time and have that discussion every 90 days and then you identify the handful of things that you really must achieve that you really want to achieve in the 90 days as part of that and then you put in place a structure of just simply a, a, a daily weekly and monthly that where you come back to them and you go, okay, what's the action plan for each of those? How are we doing against what we said we do? And you just keep working on that. That's a really good, really good thing to do. And that's that rhythm is at, is at the heart of, of what we talk about. There's a lot of, there's a, there's a kind of a model of things that we need to think about at each of those, um, uh, those 90 days and each of the pillars, but at the center of it is this 90 day, 90 day rhythm. I think that's really important actually. You know, that's that, getting into that rhythm and having stuff that's actually continuous and becomes part of your business. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's, it's, I think, you know, women calls it an operating system. I've, I've nicked that bit, uh, yeah. but I, I, re- <laughs> I really like it because what I used to find really irritating many years ago, it was like when I was in the farm supermarket, if you used to have these massive business plans that yeah. you write at the beginning of the year and yeah. you, stick them, you stick them in your drawer. And then at the end of the year, when someone was doing your appraisal, you'd pick it back out and you never even not, you didn't even know what was in it. Um, and it's like, well, what's the point of that? Then shouldn't we, as you just said there, shouldn't we really have something that's practical? You can break it down into chunks, daily, weekly, 90 days, chunks where you can really get your teeth into it and then get a sense of achievement that you're not, you're ticking things off. So I really, I really like that, that, that concept and all yeah. that to Um So let's talk about some of the challenges because, I mean, that, that's the key thing that we want to talk about, is that, is that the challenge yeah. of how you overcome them. So what the, what's the reason why that you know you got the four percent of those people don't scale uh, beyond uh, that number of employees? What, what's what are the key issues that are preventing people doing it? Yeah, well they they um, they fall into five sort of five sort of key key areas. But but if 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 I sort of give a real overarching thing to start with, then then the difficulty is being good at strategy. And being good at execution, so deli- delivering it, right? And, and being good at both of those. And, and there's some stats around that show only about 10% of businesses are good at both of both of those things. About a third of businesses are, or 30% of businesses are good at strategy and not so good at execution or following it through, essentially. Um, about, a thir- about 30% are good at doing the tactical day-to-day stuff, but not so good at thinking strategically. And then, you know, about another 10% are rubbish at both, but, but <laughs> right. But they don't last very long. Um, but, but if you want to really thrive, then you've got to be good at both. And we talk about bridging the strategy execution gap. And a, and a, a big part of that is alignment is getting the team on board and, and aligning each other. That's why the 90 day, one of the reasons why 90 day planning is so good, because if you involve the team, then you, you're thinking about it through together. Hopefully you're getting the, the strategic aspect because you've got uh, between you, you've got the strategic thinking going on. But if you're really committed to what you come out to as your night to day priorities and you build a little and you've got accountability because you've said, yeah, you know what, Hakeem, that's your area. You're going to look after that. Kevin, this is my area. This is my extra plan. And, and we're then meeting regularly to go, hey, how'd you get on, Hakeem? Do you need any help? Are you behind on the what you what you got to do you got that alignment you got that commitment um to it to it as well so the, overall that's the that's the thing but when we did a we did some research around the the challenges that affect business owners scaling up and they fell into sort of five five broad areas in terms well in terms of why businesses don't scale um beyond the beyond the, the, the nine nine or ten employees and one of those one of those is simply desire and desire and confidence OK, um, because not everybody wants to do it. And that's as I say, that's fine. And there is a there is a point, actually, at, a, at around about 10, you know, 10, 10 employees, you probably created a business that's got about a million pound turnover if you, mm. if you got to that level. And if you're as an entrepreneur, we probably took a load of risks at the beginning and we were fully, you know, to, to, to get it out there. But we've now probably got a reasonably comfortable hopefully anyway, a reasonably comfortable lifestyle that the business is working okay at the sort of million pound turnover. There's probably enough in it to pay us a reasonable amount of money um, and and whatever. Do we want to push again when somebody comes along and says, right, 
you now need to get to the point where you've got a senior leadership team with, um, and you've probably got 20, you know, you're saying, oh, I've got to take some risks again. Do we really want to do that? So there's the, there's the desire bit kicks in at different stages, that sort of risk mitigation side of them, but, but also the confidence, because as a, as a business owner, if we've, if we've started up, we may have, we may have gone straight into business out of school, or even if we've gone into work first and then we've, we come out, you know, have we got the confidence? Do we actually know or we've got that imposter syndrome and we're thinking actually, you know, you know, so so desire and confidence is 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 the is the is the first one. Then I think there's this understanding what it really takes to scale. And that's this idea of the scale-up journey that I that I've just talked talked you through. So recognizing it as a series of stepping stones. Um, but also understanding that if we want to scale properly, we probably need to have. Well, we do need to have a competitive advantage somewhere. We need to have something about what we're doing that makes us competitive advantage. And that's a combination of, yeah, it could be differentiated, you know, our USP that people talk about, but, but really advantage. So are we, you know, have we got a cost advantage or a, an offer advantage to the point where somebody would say, you know what, even though you're more expensive, Kevin, I'm going to use you because, um, because actually I can see that there's something that you're going to bring that somebody else might not do, one of your competitors. Or have I got a cost advantage internally that says, you know, I can, I'll, I'll do it at the same price as everybody else, but because I'm so much more efficient and I've got all this clever stuff going on in the background that you don't see, Mr. Customer, I can make more profits at the same price as somebody else. So where's, what's the source of my advantage? Because if I'm going to scale, I've got to have some kind of advantage, otherwise I'm just a me too. Um, and that drives through to the profitability side of things and understanding true profitability and not, and, and that includes, because often as business owners, we'll pay ourselves a dividend, won't we, rather than pay ourselves through the salary, right? Yeah. Well, if we look at our net profit, then we go, oh, yeah, we're making a 10 or 15% net profit. That's okay. But we've only, we, we, our dividends are not included in that. We probably only yeah. paid ourselves a 10 or 11K, whatever the basic minimum is. Um, Whereas if we paid ourselves a market rate salary, we might be making zero net profit or, or, or even worse. So if, we, if, if we're kidding ourselves on that, we aren't going to be able to scale because if we, if we can't get to 15% net profit and pay us ourselves a decent salary um, as well as our staff, how, you know, we're just not going to be able to scale. So that's, num that's number two. That's kind of understanding what it really, really takes to, takes, takes to scale. Um, then there's this thing about our number three really is about our, our personality and our leadership. Let's just take the leadership bit. When we start a business, we've got to roll our sleeves up and we've got to do it ourselves, haven't we? Basically, we've got to run our own. We've got to get on and do it. Then very quickly, we've got to find a way. You mentioned outsourcing. We've got to find a way that we can get rid of some of the things we shouldn't be doing. Because otherwise, we just get sucked into the day-to-day -day of, of everything. And we're doing VAT returns. We're doing all of the admin. We're doing everything. We need to find a way that frees up our time to, to focus on it. So, you know, that's the early stages of leadership is developing ourselves as a leader, understanding how to delegate uh, and finding other routes. If we can't afford to employ people, okay, that, but how do we outsource or how do we find other people to do some of these things that, that are lower value that I shouldn't be doing? But then the real transition comes a little bit later in terms of our own leadership is when we realize that actually, if I am going to scale this business, I need to create leaders behind me within the business. Right. And that's a big, that's a big challenge. So, so developing ourselves as leaders changes, but we, that's a big, big part of it. Understanding our own person, personality style, you know, where are we strong? Where are we weak? Cause some of us are very driven, but not very good at the people side of things. Other people are great at the people side and not so, you know, so, so it's understanding that and filling in any gaps in our team uh, as we, as, as we grow. So that's the, that's the leadership personality side of things. And, and that links into then building real team culture, because one of the biggest challenges after early on, it's around, um, it's, it, it, it's around getting sucked into the business, but it's also around getting the, um, getting the marketing and lead generation to, to come in. But very quickly, all the challenges become around people. And, and so we've got to find a way to build that uh, cohesive, really productive team all working really well together so being able to focus on that culture and that team engagement um, is key and the businesses that do scale have a really strong team culture uh, go, going through and then the then the final final one so that's the that's four the, the final the fifth the fifth one 
we we kind of call it overcoming the, the the chicken and the chicken and the egg because it 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 takes people and people and cash to to scale essentially right generally you know unless you've got some magic widget that you don't need any people to but it, you know it, it's going to take some cash almost certainly to to scale if you knew that your business was going to be a huge success if you could have a crystal ball and you knew it was going to be brilliant right and it was going to make all this money you'd invest everything you had in it now to to, to get there you know you if, if you and if you didn't have enough yourself you'd go and find a couple of other people to invest into you'd sell them the dream because you know absolutely that it's going going to work but we don't know when we when we start so therefore how do we you know how do we how do we give ourselves that confidence you know how do we make sure that actually we do everything if we thought about it correctly and, and, and in the right to give us the most confidence possible that what we've got is going to going to work so it's overcoming that that chicken and the egg and it brings us back a little bit to that confidence bit that i said right at the right at the beginning um and the uh, you know we got that but also avoiding that owner's owner's trap side of things so those are the five sort of broad areas that that, that, that we identify no, that's, that's, that's that's very useful so desire and confidence understanding what it takes to scale uh, and you need to have a competitive advantage number three personality and leadership for yep. building the team culture and five overcoming the chicken and the egg uh, I, I, I really like that because it, in terms of i never thought of it yeah you would wouldn't you if, if, if you were guaranteed to be successful you'd, you'd be at the bank you'd be at your friends your family invest yep. invest invest whereas you don't know so you're very circumspect and and you know, you don't invest that much. I've seen it with a lot of businesses. They they put hardly anything into it. Yeah, they keep working, put a tiny little bit in, and then they're wondering why they're not being successful. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, in terms of those, then, in your scale up journey, when you're looking at those things, that, that I'm assuming they're the, the chunks you pick off. Yeah. And we've only got a short time today, but so what? What were the key things that you that you do or or would? advise people to try and overcome some of these things to take them to it to the next step yeah so um so we'll we'll start with a we'll start with this so that understanding of the understanding of what it takes to scale and that um and and that scale up journey is a is definitely a starting point so you know we'll provide copies of the of the book for example uh to people that we, that we work with typically um but just having that understanding is a is is a is a is a big help um then then we'll get people to enforce a business rhythm within the business so 90 day planning with with a strong weekly supporting rhythm to go with it yeah when I mean, you could put in a daily and a monthly on top but but a weekly you know 90 day supported by weekly is kind of like the backbone backbone of this and structure that agenda with the right people so that you do the right things at the at, at those at those sessions. Um, that way, even if even to start if to start with, you're not thinking that strategically and not doing it maybe perfectly. You're doing it, and you're getting the yeah. habit in place, and you will get better at it over time. And as your understanding of the scale up journey and some of the other principles comes into play, then 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 you can bring bring that in. So so. So that's a that's a starting point, and we actually we have developed some software as well to help with that alignment within the business to make sure that everybody's got clarity of what the goals are, what the what the nine day priorities are, but also from the execution side, making sure that, that happens. So that we bring the alignment in in that way. Um, so so anybody can start with those. When we work when we work with the business, we will then sit down and start to think about okay, well, what is the what's the strategy? You know, where are we? Where are we headed? And we'll do all the good things that we started to talk about with other people like Jim Collins with his, yeah. you know, so what's your, you know, let's have a look at what's your, what's your core ideology? You know what, let's start right back there and have a look at your um, core purpose and your core values. What drives, you, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you really passionate about? Um, then let's look at your, at, uh, and Jim Collins calls it the big, big hairy audacious goal, doesn't it? The, 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 the BHAG, you know, let's look at that. So, so if we've done the, if, and, and and the way he describes it, if you've done your core values and your core purpose, that's kind of like the north star. That's 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 what guides us, right? But but your BHAG is your next mountain that you're going to going to climb. So that's typically a ten to fifteen year horizon, but it could be a bit shorter in in some respects. And it might be that 
I want to retire in five years time. Yeah. So that becomes my key milestone. Um, but let's, let's, you know, let, let's do that. And we'll work it back from a, from that longer term to the, to then the three year plan and one year plan. But again, exactly what you were raising objections to in the pharmaceutical industry and in big corporates all the same where you produce this huge document um, that sits in a drawer. It's not about that. The whole point of this thinking and the planning is mainly the process that goes and the thinking that goes into the fact that we've got other people think about it, but then we'll, we'll produce a one, we'll do it on a one pager. You know, it'll be a, we have a great big poster that we, that we use, call it our smart web. Um, but that helps us with the, with the three year planning. But then that gives us then also then the one year priorities, the, the critical paths for the next year that we must achieve which then helps to feed into the 90 day process. Because if every 90 days, we're also as well as saying, what's, how do we keep the plate spinning and the lights, the lights turned on, but we're also saying, actually, we said we were going in this direction up that part of the mountain. Um, you know, where have we got to, which is the next bit we need to, we need to climb up or we need, we need to do. So let's bring that into our 90 days as well. Then we've got that combination of always looking ahead as well as, as well as, what needs to change right now to keep the to keep the lights on things we didn't think about before um, and if we throw in there a couple of business improvement initiatives and a constant you know, constant innovation and improvement then we're getting somewhere now on, on where we or on where we want to get to but we we within that entrepreneurial scale-up system we break down the things you need to think about from going from one stepping stone to the next into into four key areas and then we've got what we call an in-flight checklist which says, okay, well, if we need to think about strategy, what are the things we need to think about within strategy? If we need to think about people, what are, what are, what are those within there? So we'll get business owners to do an exercise every 90 days where they'll self-rate with their team against this checklist, which will then identify, or the idea is that as a team, they identify one or two priority areas, not the whole lot, but they go, okay, where do we, where do we all agree we're a bit weak? Um, or equally, maybe where some of us think we're really weak and some of us think we're strong. So what's going on there? But let's, let's identify a, pri a priority area and then let's develop some actions to, to develop that. So that's the constant improvement piece. Excellent. Let's write that down. I think, I, that, I think that, <laughs> that last point you've made there, the, an immediate priority is that if, you, if you've got half the team saying, oh, we're really strong at this, and the other half are saying, no, we're, that's one of our weaknesses. Yeah, that's um, very interesting to understand how that happens. Well, you know, it, it's quite, you can quite imagine it. We see it quite, quite a lot. The, 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 the business owner says, yeah, we're really strong core purpose. You know, we absolutely know what we're not, know what we're about. Um, you ask the rest of the team and they, <laughs> they're not quite <laughs> so sure. <laughs> so, so one of the things you put in as one of the challenges, which I just wanted to delve in a bit more, because I'm, I'm not. I'm not obsessed with it, but I love talking about team dynamics and management yeah. and how you get the best team. So when you are an entrepreneur, you're on your own. I mean, you said you, you build it. You know, you've got your own personality. You might not be a great leader. You might be a good leader. But how do you then maintain those core values and that core purpose as you start to grow? Because you're bringing in new people all the time. Yeah. So what's your advice on that? Yeah, and I, and that is you know that is a big a big a big key to it. You know. It's it's relatively easy as a small small business to to have that family culture in a way you know all pulling all pulling together as you say as you get more people it's it, it's tough so the first thing is to recognise that and 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 therefore to to actually actively think about how we're going to do this and this comes there's lots of lots of different ways but uh, and and again every ninety days we would recommend that you do a little bit of a team culture, you know, how is the team culture, you know, and, and what do we need to include that in your, in your priorities as to, okay, you know, what do we need to do to address it? And one simple way of doing that, you know, we've talked about core values and, and frankly, if somebody had said to me, and I, and I know when I started in the pharmaceutical, somebody, you know, if somebody had said to me, Kevin, right, you know, I just want to take you off of what you're doing for the, for the minute. You know, I, I know we said we've got to, you know, do all of this stuff uh, that, that, that you can do, but I just want to sit, spend, spend an hour or two thinking about core values with me. I'd have gone off, <laughs> yeah, go away, right? That's not important right now, right? But I tell you, businesses that have really, you, you see it through times of crisis, pandemic is a classic example, businesses that have really got a strong core ideology, really clear about their purpose and their values are the ones that were able to really come through it um, because they, they can really galvanize themselves around it. So, 
then what you've got to do is say, okay, well, actually, okay, well, what if we haven't defined our core values, let's let's define them, right? And let's if we have defined them, let's make sure that everybody knows about them within the within the business. So um uh, if we haven't done that communication piece very well, let's do it. Have we if if we've done that, then maybe the next thing is okay, well, have has everybody gone well if that's a the core value that is for the whole business how does it apply to me in my role because i'm in marketing he's in production um he's in finance what what's the you know the 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 nuance of the core value might be quite different so what does it mean to me in my role so have we personalized uh these 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 core values and and then have we embedded them into some of the key processes so you you were asking you know if we get new people coming on board, how do we, you know, how do we do that? Well, if you're really good at that, if you've really defined your team culture and you've got all those values sorted, you're going to, when you're interviewing people, you're going to be assessing people as well as against the skills they got for a particular job requirement. You're going to be assessing them against the core values. Um, so you're only going to be bringing in people that understand them and are hopefully that you've agreed are going to fit into the, into the team. When you onboard them, how are you going to onboard them to make sure that the core values and the, and all those good things, the core ideology is is within your onboarding process, and the same with your evaluations. So every time you do your um, employee evaluations, uh, if you're going to do that, your reviews, you know, are you going to include the core values in some way? And those, and by doing that, you're reinforcing the team team culture. And if you've really sat down early on and identified what it what what is what does make is smart you know take, take you know what what is it about us that is that team culture and how do we behave as as a team and, and as individuals and, and everything and you've really got that clearly identified then when you bring other people into it it's much more likely that you'll be able to continue it but you know don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not saying it's easy and <laughs> um if you know if, if a business owner out there is struggling with it i'm not saying you can just tick a box and and it'll be sorted um it takes time and effort um, but that's why it comes back to recognizing it is the first thing. And then you can build it in on a, on a, on an ongoing basis, um, one step at a time to improve it. So over time you, 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 you build these things up, but there's, unfortunately, um, I'd love to say there's this magic, magic bullet that will suddenly make us all brilliant business owners, but it's, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's persistence and, and hard work, but in the right in the right direction, in the focused direction, understanding what it is we need to do and, and, and working on it. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. you said, if, if, that, if that commitment isn't in that consistency, um, and I think actually really, yeah, committing to that is the way that you want, you want to run your business because lots of people say they do and then they behave in a completely different way that doesn't really demonstrate this. Oh, these are our core values and every day, you know, in, honestly, in, in integrity, is one aspect. I can't remember. I did a podcast some time ago, and um, it said, "Yeah, everyone, everyone says honesty, integrity, and then actually that was allegedly one of Enron's core values. It was that like, actually on their <laughs> in their big plaque in the floor, uh, and you're like, well, you didn't obviously live up to that honesty and integrity, did yeah. you? Well, most people, if they do an exercise in core values, they do the exercise, spend half a day on it or something, um, maybe maybe led by a consultant or whatever. They come up with core values and they stick them on the wall." Um, and uh, you know, in reception, if they've got reception area or they, or, or, or where, whatever, and, and then you, that's it. Well, that's, yeah. uh, that's no good. You know, it, it'll have done a tiny little thing at the beginning of getting people to talk about it, but beyond that, it's, it's, it's no good. You've, you've got to embed them, uh, within, within, within everything you, you, you do. And, um, if you want, you know, just to, you were to about sort of leading from the top, I think as, as, as well there, you know, if you want the kind of culture where, you want your team to contribute and to to be uh, but also you want them to be constantly challenging themselves and trying to do things better and whatever else well if you're the kind of person that that is basically giving orders out and when somebody does something that's not quite right you're wrapping them over the knuckles um what kind of culture are you going to create you know you've got to give them the room to fail to fail I'm a, you know you know i know i know this is not this is not not new and, and and i you know i can i can hear other people saying it but you've, you've got to give people the chance to to fail um in but then not come down on them like a ton of ton of bricks and and so uh, because you want them to admit when they've made a mistake so that you can be 
put right. So again, if you're the kind of business owner that believes that you've got to be untouchable and always right, um, you're going to create that kind of culture within the rest of your rest of your team, and they're going to be scared to pipe up when they go uh, to to admit a admit a mistake. Whereas if every now and then you're prepared to and say, you know what, I, I don't I don't actually know the answer here, but I reckon Hakeem, if we work together on it, we could probably sort this, All right? That's much more likely to create the kind of relationship that we probably want than if I fluff my way through through it. I don't really know how to do it, but I make something up and I tell you, we we'll just go and do this, or or, or or I try and make out I'm I'm better than I am. Um, so again, it's that it's that leading from the top, um, showing that actually we can be a bit vulnerable and admit when we don't know things and admit when we make mistakes. And that's the starting point of any really good good culture within business, in my view. No, 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 I completely agree. I think it's, uh, I think anytime you speak about leadership and good quality leadership, vulnerability is always in there somewhere. That's it. Yeah. That you don't believe that you're bulletproof and no, no, I've got to show uh, that I know the answer to it because you don't, it doesn't matter who you are, you don't know the answer to everything. And people will see through that veneer. Yeah. And, but you, as you said, it'll create a culture where people are, all right, okay. So I, I can't really make a mistake because he always thinks he knows everything. So I've got to, to pretend I do as well, and I think that then does yeah. start to lead down the path of uh, of, of an end run <laughs> in yeah. the end. Hopefully, hopefully not that significant, but that Jim, that's that's the starting point for getting to that that position. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so in terms of the scale up journey, and no names, no Pat, you'd have to give me any name. But what's the kind of the best kind of scale up journey you've seen where somebody's you know started off maybe not that confident, and then all of a sudden yeah. scaled up and moved forward? Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, you know, I don't want to give, I don't want to give examples of somebody that's say gone from nothing to billion pounds, you know, yeah. billion, you know, outside of most of our spheres, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, those, those, those ones where we're maybe getting towards the 50 employee sort of type devils as a real, real success in there. So there's a, there's a company we've worked with, um, probably for about 10 years now. Um, and when we first started working with them, they were four, four employees, um they they and it, all of their their business model was all around ad hoc revenue so it was project to project um whereas so certainly 90 percent of it was project stuff less than 10 percent was any kind of recurring um stable stable business now they've 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 gone through the 40 employee mark um they've had two rounds of investment in the in the meantime to help them do that and one of those rounds was to help them to get from the eight to 12 sort of level to the 20 25 25 so they got investment to help them to get there quicker to be able to recruit ahead of the revenues and then they built the revenues coming up behind them and now 95 percent plus of their income is on a recurring revenue model so they've got that solid foundation for that and the and the business owner has gone from Sometimes we talk about the 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 um, competence stairway. If you, you, you yeah yeah, <laughs> so um, he is. So for anybody listening that hasn't hasn't heard about that, you know, you we, whenever we learn something new, when we start something, we're unconsciously incompetent at something. We, we don't actually understand it enough to even know that we don't really know um, how, to, how to do it properly. So you know, when we're a kid driving a car. We, we just think it's dead, dead easy, right? You know, we, we, and, and we, we think, we can, and when we start, we suddenly realize, then we become consciously incompetent. We actually realize that there are things that we're not very good at and that we've got to work on and, and whatever. Then we can do it because we have to think about it. So we become consciously competent. And eventually we get to the point where we're unconsciously competent. We hardly even have to think about it. And driving a car is a, is a, is a, is a great example of that. We don't actually have to think about changing gear or pressing the accelerator braking. You know, we just kind of steer it. We just do it all, 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 to, all together. And business is, is no exception to that. And I would say with that particular company that I've talked about, the owner has gone through that transition from where they were already, they were already, they certainly weren't, weren't unconsciously incompetent. They were already probably, um, Getting to the point where they were they were consciously competent, but um, but they but but maybe they were maybe they were a bit consciously aware that they weren't weren't fully there. But now they've got to the point where they're able to make the right decisions without necessarily having to go through a framework or thinking. You know what what you know what sort of things I need. You know I need to 
exercise to work on there or something. They just do it because it's become almost gut instinct. So that's a that I would say is one of one of our one of our biggest business biggest successes and most rewarding in that both the business and the owner have really gone through a real transformation development over that over that period. No, thank you very much. And and I thought the next question is obviously. You know, as we talk, I talked at the beginning about you know scaling, go traction, etc. Uh, what would you say is because they are very American, so, yeah. <laughs> for want of a better word, yeah. which isn't a problem because I've got lots of American uh, listeners, of course. Yeah. Um, but from a from a British point of view, because we are slightly different and we have slightly nuanced way of doing them, what would you say is your your main uh, if you had a USP? Why would why would someone say, well, actually, I want to work with Kevin and the entrepreneurial scale up system as opposed to going to read Vern Harnish? I know that apart from the fact that they're they are bigger business, uh, I think they're targeting. Yeah. Is there, is there anything specifically that you'd say that you do that actually is different? I think it's the yes, is the is the simple answer. And I think it's the combination of that scale up the scale up journey and the and, and the way that we need to approach things with the business rhythm at the heart and the way that we then deliver that support primarily which is through peer peer to peer working and it comes back to this inspiration that confidence i was talking about earlier on the, the personal development if if we what we do is we'll put business owners together so five or six five or six really good business owners together and every month we'll come up with we'll get them to bring their challenges and we'll work together to overcome the challenges that they're actually facing on a day-to-day basis as well as introducing the next element of of the scale up the scale up journey so we've got that combination of the scale up principles and what we need to do and think think about it from that point of view but with the ability to be able to bounce your ideas off of and learn from other business owners that may have come through the same sort of challenges as, as, as you're at, com- combine that together. And as I say, at the very heart of it, this 90 day rhythm. So we get all of our business owners that we work with to do the 90 day planning. We run 90 day planning workshops and we have the software that also then supports, supports that ac- activity and that business rhythm in, be- in between uh, to build that, build that alignment. So I think those things combined really practical, tangible things specifically aimed at that three to 30 sort of sweet spot really if you like with it within business owners as to as to addressing specifically the needs that they might have in that scaling up journey excellent so yeah a very unique and i think practical which is what i like i really like practical steps and 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 yeah and 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 the the book is aimed to be that handbook you know i don't want this to be a book that somebody flicks through or even if they read it from cover to cover and then it goes on a shelf um for all time you know there's a great expression called shelf development isn't there which, which, <laughs> yes. right? um so it's not about shelf development what i want is i want somebody to 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 go through it and then to go right oh i, I want to i'm going to scribble on that i'll put a post-it note on on that and i'm going to i'm going to going to do that and then what's the next bit i'm going to do? i want them i'd lo- love them to have it with them and they're referring back to them on a regular basis and they're using that on an ongoing basis to help them through through their through their scale-up journey as a practical uh practical handbook rather than a theoretical textbook okay perfect so number one where where i'm, I'm sure it's in all good bookstores where do you get the entrepreneurial scale-up uh, system from yeah you can you can go on to all of your usual online online retailers and there's a there's a, a there's an audible version of it as well it's a, big, it's a big downside to the audible version though because it's me doing the doing the talk so you'd have to listen to my voice how long did that take because i've done i've done a short ebook <laughs> and i mean i actually got someone to narrate because i started doing it what the hell is going to take ages so how long did it take you to do it uh well the the finished audio is eight over eight hours long oh yeah I thought um, yeah. so yeah it took quite a long time but then the book itself took quite a long to lot a long time to write um yes you so you can do that you can go on to um Probably the best website to go on for us is is the esisgroup.co.uk. And um and 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 that you can you can actually buy the book from from there. Um, but you'll also find some additional resources that that you might find really, really useful as well. So um if I just 
if I just repeat that um, that website address, so because I think I've just got it wrong, um, it's it's simply ESUS Group. That's E S U S, which stands for Entrepreneurial Scale Up System. So ESUS E S U S Group dot co dot uk. There's there's no the in front of it. It's just simply ESUS Group dot co dot uk. No problem. I'll put those links into the podcast description. And then finally, if there were, well, penultimately, I'll say, if they were uh, trying to get hold of you, what's the best way to get hold of you? If they, they, let's say, they look at it and they think, this is great. I want to get you know started with the uh, scale-up system. I need uh, some support. What's the best way to do that? Yeah, you can do all that actually through that through that website. Okay. Uh, but if you want to find me on LinkedIn um, as well to go dire- come directly, then that would be great, linking with me. Um, you know, we're always looking as well, if I may, for, for we run our own podcast actually called um, called Scale Up Radio. And we'd love to hear uh, stories of business owners that have that have scaled again in that in that sort of range. You know, we're not looking necessarily for somebody that's the, that's the, we're not like the Bill Gates, you know, for example. But <laughs> but um, but, you know, somebody with real practical, maybe growing the business to five or more employees um, with a good good story. That 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 would be great. OK, no, that's excellent. So the the final, final question is, if there's one thing I always ask everybody that you want, someone listens to this and they think that's great and they're thinking, oh, I can't remember everything that Kevin said. What's the one thing you'd want them to, to, to stick in their mind? Well, apart from apart from buying the book, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the it, put in place that 90 day rhythm. Get it, get it with get in your diary. And put it in your diary for every 90 days, right? Have a recurring calendar invite where you spend at least half a day, but really it should be a good full day, but let's say at least half a day where you're going to take time out from the business and you're going to sit down, as I say, ideally with your team, if you've got them, but one or two other people, and you're going to going to do that exercise of what went well, what didn't go so well, and what does, the, what does good look like at the end of the next 90 days? If you just do that, you will you will be doing a lot more than most business owners. Thank you very much, Kevin. I mean, I, anyone who listens to my podcast knows I love process. I love systems. So anytime I have someone who's talking about a system, I get very excited because I, I, I learn as much, if not more, than the people that listen to the podcast. So I really appreciate that. Anyone who is listening, I would suggest you get in contact with Kevin. You know, and and even if you don't read the book, and if you don't read the book, at least at the very least, put start putting in a 90-day planning cycle because it will, as Kevin said, make a difference and you'll be doing more than loads and loads of other businesses. And if you want to scale up, you really need to start uh, thinking about uh, those points that Kevin spoke about. So I really appreciate your time, Kevin. Uh, and this will be out in the not-too-distant future. And all of the links that Kevin talked about will be in the podcast description. So you'll be able to get hold of Kevin and get uh, his book and get onto the ESOS group as well and get all those great tools. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zine Hakim, for having me on. It's been a, been a pleasure. My pleasure. And that's that. Some great advice again. I hope you'll agree. And this time from Kevin Brent. Some golden nuggets to take away if you're looking to scale a business. The 90-day plan is one thing that really sticks out in my mind and creating that rhythm in your business. Now, there was so much in this episode that it's really hard to do it justice in this wrap-up. So rather than me trying to give you all the, 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 the golden nuggets, I would suggest that what you do is obviously just go and buy Kevin's book instead. The details, as always, are in the podcast description. And don't forget to check out the show notes at www.thesalesaccelerationformula.com. And as always... Subscribe, like, and share with your friends, colleagues, and anyone else who you think may be interested. But most of all, keep the feedback coming so that we can continue to improve and give you more of what you like. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and as I always do. Um, Keep listening and keep growing. 